Hello and welcome. My name is Sharla Manglitz. I am currently going um, through cancer treatment chemotherapy. I am a second time breast cancer patient and I am going through cancer care during this COVID-19 uh, situation. How has COVID-19 impacted my cancer care? Surprisingly so in a very positive way. Um, it helps that I'm taking this very seriously, but I'm not playing into the paranoia and pandemonium that we see in public and portrayed and sensationalized on television. When COVID began spreading quickly in the United States, the cancer clinic I'm treated at put into place very strict rules. No longer could anyone accompany you to the appointment. It was kind of like a zombie land with just enough staff and a few of us complicated cases walking the hallways. I found myself with only one or two other people in an otherwise overflowing waiting area, followed by clinic rooms, normally entirely full, were almost all empty. That initial experience was rather seamless. And although the environment and the staff very understandably were on high alert, for me as a patient, it was almost serene in the waiting areas and in the clinic rooms. COVID-19 has impacted my cancer care, surprisingly again, in a very positive way. Um, I am able to because COVID-19 required the cancer system that I'm treated at to revise and tighten its rules. I found that I could immediately reach someone in the scheduling department. I could easily reach my surgical oncologist as well as my medical oncologist and other health practitioners that are required during this care. And if not, they return my calls or emails almost immediately. I found there are no longer excessive long delays just to check in. Gone are the companions and others who are blabbering on speaker phones on their cell phones or groups of people looking very sad and miserable, compounding to my own angst. The last thing you want to do is sit around and feel like you're in a funeral home with a deli ticket with your number on it waiting to be called back for your news. Gone are the sad groups waiting for the news of the diagnosis. The visual and auditory difference is vast and positive. To have speedy registrations, the ability to get into a clinic room and see your doctor and to be able to communicate directly and rather quickly is actually wonderful. To have the gloom and doom environment suddenly lifted is a gift. And I think that I can say this with some experience as I'm a two-time cancer patient within the last five years. The last time I went through this, 2014 through 20, almost 16, this was during the Ebola outbreak and the other panic that went on then. I remember that, but nothing much other than initial screening was done. The registration remained clogged. The waiting rooms and lobbies were full, stuffed like a can of sardines. The groups of doom and gloomers were still there. This time, it was like a plan was immediately put into place and revised as necessary. However, it is interesting to have a checkpoint and a drop off, kind of like a school bus stop as a child to have to walk in for treatment or appointments. I can appreciate how this might be harrowing for some people, particularly first time cancer patients. But this time around with my cancer, I wanted it to be a bit more of a private experience. I get to walk into a clinic where to the outside world, the unknown goes on inside to them. But for us, appointments and treatments take place peacefully and there is no more doom and gloom environment. How am I managing any anxieties about my personal health? As mentioned, this is not my first rodeo with cancer. So I know what's coming and I know what treatment is like. I know how it affects me as a professional, as a mother, as a partner. And those were very bad experiences previously. So I have tremendous anxiety about the initial treatment. I have also had a lot of wound healing complications and other delays. So it's feeling like that one day you've been dreading for so long is approaching, but when it will arrive is simply a mystery. That said, after my first cancer experience, I quit being a lawyer, enrolled in the Institute for Integrative Nutrition in New York City and graduated in 2019. I did this to understand cancer and health, particularly my own, to be able to help others to obtain information about causation, prevention, and whatever else I could absorb about this disease and health, because being a lawyer no longer served me. Health did, and I wanted to help others feel better and implement natural remedies. During this time, I took courses in meditation and have learned natural techniques for dealing with the anxiety of the disease and other life issues. As relates to COVID, I have no additional anxiety. 
In fact, people are finally implementing better hygiene personally and professionally, and I appreciate those efforts. What I want people to know about patients with cancer on active treatment during this time is the following. This would actually apply to any time. You will never be able to understand what a patient undergoing treatment is thinking, how their life just skidded off the road. Are they in the middle of planning a wedding, getting divorced, going through a custody battle, caring for aging parents, and other things? We are horrified by having our body parts and organs chopped off and out, and then to have to be given poison to try to stay alive. It is almost too much to live through. And you also get to lose your hair, eyelashes, eyebrows, and your physical identity in this process. It's very, very horrifying. It affected my vision and my hearing, and I still have ongoing GI problems from the effects of treatment the first time. And it is just impossible to explain this comprehensively to someone who has not been through it. Please know that we do appreciate your compassion and thoughts. We may not always take our loved ones' calls, and we may not always respond to letters or emails, but they do matter. And I would like to point out that from my perspective, and for others, I have asked, the very last thing that we want to talk about in our leisure is cancer. We are living it already, so talk about anything except cancer. That said, as a simple suggestion, I want you to know that when I find out people in my ecosystem have cancer, I offer to become a pen pal. I send postcards and photos of Florida where I live. I write about anything, even if mundane. And the responses have been tremendously positive. It's really nice to receive something tangible in the mail that is not a cancer book. A positive thing that I'm taking away from this crisis is the following. I believe that this country has surprised me with its compassion and its unity to help medical professionals, police, first responders, feeding the elderly and the young. It's truly an incredible time to witness and this proves love wins. Some things that are really important to me right now as a cancer patient, two things. My son has now witnessed me go through cancer twice. He is 10 years old. He sees the news. It's all very negative sensationalism that scares him. Of course, I worry about my child. Second, no one talks about cancer and intimacy in sex, cancer surgery in sex, cancer treatment in sex, and they should because there are so many silent sufferers and this never gets addressed. Specific takeaways that I would like you to know is that this has taught us all something. You and I don't know everything. We continue to learn and we need to keep our minds open as well as to alternative therapies. Never forget what a positive impact you can have by returning phone calls and emails promptly. It makes the patient who is really paying for you to be employed in reality feel like a person, that we're not just a number at the deli or an annoyance. It can relieve unbelievable worry that goes on as long as it takes you to respond to that call or email. Finally, I appreciate all of you and the hard work that you have done to get here. We will get through this and thank you for all that you are doing.